Hi friends, welcome back to Faith and Arrow Homestead. My name is Jaylee and today we are gonna to be talking about the garden, of course, because it's that time of the year. But before we talk about what's right here in front of me, let's glance back to um, the nursery. I went to the nursery this morning and purchased all of the things that you see here. And I took a little bit of footage while I was there and I'm gonna throw that in there just because I love watching other people's trips to the nursery. So walk through that with me and then we'll talk about what we have here. Okay, so great stuff, right? I love our local nursery. Um, it's pretty big as far as nurseries go. They have a lot of options, a lot of stuff. That's where my parents bought their fruit trees. Um, you haven't seen that yet because I'm still in the process of putting that video together, but you'll hear about that very shortly. Um, and it's where I go to purchase my plant starts. Um, I don't do a lot of purchasing of starts because I start so many things from seed here on, on the homestead. Um, but I'm going to be honest with you. Could I start everything from seed, at least in the season of life that I'm in now? I could. I love going to the nursery and picking out plants. It brings me so much joy. Um, and so I'm okay. I'm happy. Some of the things that I have here, I didn't really need, but I purchased because it's just fun and it brings me joy. So we're going to go through this really quick. And then once I have um, shown you everything that I purchased at the nursery, I'm going to go ahead and plant them quickly, but I have just a few things. It won't take me long. And then once those are planted, I'm going to take you around for the very first garden tour of the season. The garden's already planted out. I planted it out yesterday, um, but I'll take you through a tour and I'll show you everything that I did. I'll give you varieties, the whole shebang. Um, to start with, the two most unnecessary things that I purchased at the nursery, more mint. I am a mint addict. It's a real problem. I love mint. I'm addicted to it. I have on this homestead probably 10 different varieties just throughout the property. My two Favorite, favorite, favorite varieties, and that's why I bought them, are strawberry mint. Strawberry mint's probably my number one favorite. Um, I love it so much. It doesn't come back every year for me very strong. I know, you know, it's well known that mint is aggressive and it'll take over a garden bed. I don't have it in my garden. I have it in pots and in the landscaping. Strawberry never comes back for me, or if it does, it's very weak. Um, and so I have to purchase it every time and that's okay. I'm willing to do that because it's just delicious. It smells so good. It's so sweet in tea and I love it so much. My other favorite is pineapple mint. Oh, so good. Um, it came back for me last year, but so far it doesn't look like it's come back for me this year. So I went ahead and bought it. Same thing, very aromatic, very sweet and flavorful in tea. And I just love it. So I purchased two mints. I purchased um, a thyme. This, I don't know if these are, are these supposed to, it says perennial, but my thyme did not come back for me this year um, that I planted out last year. And we had a very mild winter. So I'm just not sure if it does very well in our region, but I love cooking with thyme. Had to get some in the garden. I probably should have purchased two of these now that I'm thinking about it. I just purchased the one, but that's okay. It'll do. 
The other thing that I purchased is dill. Um, I have never had great success growing this in the past. Um, so we're gonna go for it again this year and see how this looks like a very healthy dill plant. So hopefully that'll, that'll do. Now, the next thing is the reason I went to the nursery. These were all bonus items. I guess I probably did want the time in the dill, but I mean, I wouldn't have cried if it wasn't there. I would have probably literally cried tears if this wasn't there. So last year, if you've been following me for a while now, last gardening season, my plant starts had struggled really badly and I ended up supplementing a lot from the nursery last year. And I ended up buying this pepper called Garden Salsa. And it's a very flavorful, semi-spicy pepper that I just loved last year. I ate one or more every single day throughout the season. It was very prolific, delicious, delicious pepper. And I never did get around to saving any seeds from it. And I don't know if the seeds even would have, you know, you never know when you're purchasing from a nursery, like unless it's labeled heirloom, it could be a hybrid, who knows? Um, and so I was really hoping that they'd have it again. And as you saw in that little flashback, they did. So I was able to, per I, I could have gotten more, but I didn't want to go crazy. So I got three um, of these beautiful, really big garden salsa peppers. And I'm thrilled to have them on the homestead. And then I did also just go ahead and get this California wonder pepper. I probably didn't need to, but it's a sweet bell pepper and the plant just looked really healthy. And it was right next to the garden salsa pepper. So I said, why not? But I'm so excited to have three garden salsa pepper plants this year. Such a good pepper, like so far my favorite pepper. Um, I have a few empty tomato spots out in the garden because I've massively expanded the amount of tomatoes um, and the um, square footage, I guess, of tomatoes. I'll show you when we go out there. I switched things up majorly this year. Um, and so because of that, I didn't accurately calculate the amount of tomatoes I need. So I have some empty spots. So I purchased um, just a three pack of this um, San Marzano. Um, it says on the tag that it's a good canning pepper or a uh, good canning tomato. So I just bought a three pack of these and I'll use these to fill those empty spots and that'll be great. Out here on the patio, which by the way is where I want to be talking to you about this, but my neighbor is pressure washing their house and it's very loud out there. So we're in the breezeway, but out here on the patio, we have, um, my husband did this thing where he took this giant pot that like looks like a barrel. It's not, it's like a cheap plastic, but it looks like a barrel. And he like um, put um, a, a, a pole in it and we painted the pole black and we filled it with soil and we used the pole to hang the string lights that are on our patio. And I plant stuff every year in that little planter around where the pole is to just to make it look more pretty and decorative. And I like putting annuals in there. I could absolutely put perennials in there. I like shopping for annuals and switching it up, switching up the color schemes and everything. And so um, as you saw in that footage, I shopped around a little bit and I ended up getting this um, six pack of alyssum. I love alyssum because it's very fragrant. It smells so sweet like honey. Um, and these had three different colors and I thought that was really pretty. And then I ended up getting these petunias. Um, they had purple and I could have done the purple to match this purple, but for some reason, I'm just really feeling white this year. I really wanted white with just a little bit of color. So the purple alyssum um, with the white petunias, I think will be really pretty. Both of these are full sun, which is good because that pot is in full sun and supposedly they produce blooms all season long, which is what I was going for. So we will, um, I'll go ahead and do that today as well, get those planted, that'll be really pretty. And that's it, so it's just a small haul, but I start all of my plants from seeds, so I don't need a lot. I, I love it, I love going to the nursery and I love purchasing plants, it makes me so happy. I love looking around at all the families, all the, the, the little kids running around the nursery and everybody shopping for their tomatoes and their pretty flowers for their patios and watching people buy their hanging baskets. I don't know, it just makes me so happy. I really just love being there. So it brought me joy today. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these things planted out and then as soon as these are planted, I will take you guys around and do a garden tour. The garden tour is gonna look a little different because in the past I've turned the camera around and have tried to talk to you and I'm not doing that anymore. We're graduating, it's been three years on this channel almost and we're changing things a little bit to make it more enjoyable and comfortable for me. So I'm going to keep the camera facing outwards the entire time. We're gonna walk around, I'm going to voice over and I'll be able to much more calmly and efficiently show you what's going on in the garden. That's how we're doing it.
from now on. <laughs> Stay tuned till the end of this video um, if you are interested, if you've been following me for some time, if you're invested in not just the homestead, but me as a person, stay tuned to the end of the video because I have some information to share with you. Some really interesting, exciting, interesting, different things have been going on in mine and Tom's lives. And I can't tell you everything, but I've got a little bit of an update for you. Um, so stay tuned to the end of the video for that. Look at Benny. What a creeper. <laughs> I love that dog so much. All right, we're going to exit the breezeway and go out right onto the patio because there's a few things on the patio to show you. I'm hoping that we can get this done before it rains because look at that sky. It Rain is coming. I can smell it in the air. So let's make this snappy. But first, I want to show you this rosemary plant. My neighbor gave me this crock. It's gorgeous. And I decided to put this three-year-old uh, rosemary plant in it. Um, because I like taking this plant in in the winter and it was just in an ugly pot. So I did that. And then here on um, our patio table, I've got the mint. So in this first one, I've got the strawberry mint. And then over here in the other one, I've got the pineapple mint. And I just was trying to figure out where to put it. I've got so much mint, you guys. So I thought that this would be a cute little decoration to have on the patio and over here, you'll see in this box, I found this on the side of the road and I painted the white on it. It's just like an old crate. And I've got strawberries and mint in here. So there's a few strawberries in here that came back this year. They're from last year. But the rest of this is mint. And there's like five varieties of mint in here. It's it's insane. Really, I've, I've got a problem. So yeah, here's our patio. And then this is that thing that I was telling you about. That pot looks like a crate. It's not. It's just plastic. Um, and this is where I planted the alyssum and the petunias. And I, I think it looks lovely together. I, I'm, I'm happy with what I selected. And that'll look so pretty as it fills out. This is that black pole that I was telling you about. Um, and we have, like I said, our string lights attached to it. So that was the purpose of all of that. And then let's go ahead and just start right over here. So this little section on the side here, on the side of the house, this is my lily section. Um, all three of those big plants are three different kinds of lilies. Lilies are my favorite flower. And then interspersed in here are a few sunflowers. They're volunteers from last year. And um, everything else that you see, all those little green spots, that's a wildflower mix that I just threw down for fun. So I'm excited to see what that looks like. Now this bed is identical to the one next to it. It has um, uh, onions in the front. Behind that are my tomatoes and this is what I did differently. These are all of my cherry tomatoes. So I've got two varieties this year. I have the black cherry tomato, which you guys know is my absolute favorite tomato. And then I also have the sun sugar tomato and that was um, a seed that was actually sent to me by a viewer, Gary. Um, and I'm so excited to have both of those, but that that's different this year. And that opened up a lot of room for me over in my main garden. So like I said, these two beds are identical. It has, they have onions, they have the uh, cherry tomatoes. Uh, behind, in the very back of the beds, there are sugar snap peas. This other bed is identical, like I said, but it also has a few random sunflowers that were volunteers from last year and then it also um, each bed at the very end of the bed has a ground cherry I was trying to be really strategic with where I put the ground cherries because they can really like take over and get really wild but I want them because they're so good for snacking okay and this is my main garden compound if you're new here and you've never seen it before my husband and my dad and I built this and I love it this is my third year with it so we're just gonna go around clockwise starting over here on the left hand side and this just so you know you'll see it's surrounded by netting to keep the rabbits out so over here in this bed we have chamomile and rhubarb these two chamomile plants right here are the only ones that I planted this year all of this chamomile that you're seeing is volunteer chamomile from last year's garden. It falls, the seeds fall, it drops, and it overwinters, and then it seeds itself in the spring, and that's exactly what's happened. This rhubarb uh, plant is out of control, and I need to Google what to do with it because it's new. It's its second year. I planted it last year and did not get this big last year, and I don't know what to do with it. And then in these pots here, I also have um, two more ground cherries and then in those pots, uh, the chamomile. Um, this bed has uh, a few random onions and also a few strawberry plants that came back from last year, but everything's being um, crowded out by the rhubarb.
Okay, over here beyond the rhubarb bed, we have the first of two pepper beds. In this pepper bed, we've got two different varieties. The bullnose pepper that I bought from Baker Creek a long time ago that they don't sell anymore. I have to remember to save seeds because I can't get them anymore. Um, and then the this Grand Bell mix of peppers. There's also jade cucumbers in here and some onions as well. Moving on from that bed, we have over here our second pepper bed. And in this bed, you can very clearly see which ones I got from the nursery. I just planted those. They're very vibrantly green. Those are the, the salsa um, garden pepper and that one California wonder. The rest of these are a mini bell pepper and another uh, brand of mixed bell pepper that has um, purple. So I thought that, that would be fun. Just a few onions in that bed. So those are the two pepper beds and we're gonna keep moving here. Up next, we have both tomato beds. Here is the cattle panel trellis that we installed together in a previous video. And in this bed, uh, both of them, I staggered these tomatoes. This is my preference, my preferable way to plant them. I have them on either side of the cannel paddle trellis, but I have them staggered. And that's good spacing for me. It's worked well for me in the past. Now in this bed, I have Chef's Choice, Mortgage Lifter, Subarctic Plenty, Thornburn Terracotta, Martino's Roma, as well as the San Marzano that we just purchased today. And then in both the front and the back of these beds, I have onions planted as well. So these are my two tomato beds. I'm really excited about having them back here. We did a little crop rotation this year. I had them where the peppers are now in previous years. This is the first time that we've had them back here and I'm excited to see how they do. And then this random plant right here is an echinacea perennial that comes back every year. I love it. And those are my tomato beds. So we're moving right along here. You can see where we started over by the rhubarb and we're making our way around clockwise. So those were my two big vegetable beds. Now this is mostly a flower bed. We've got um, cosmos and zinnias. And then in the each of the four corners of this bed, I have a zucchini plant, but mostly this is a flower bed. And I think it's going to be very beautiful. I'm, I'm very excited. Next to that, we have a sort of a flower bed. There are calendula um, kind of fit all in through here in between the rest of these plants, but mostly this is cabbage and lettuce. That's what you're seeing for the most part with calendula sprinkled in there. And it's got a lot of weeds, and all of those weeds are white currant tomatoes that are trying to come back from last year and I despise them. But as soon as I get my first batch of mowed grass from Tom, we'll start mulching that and it'll get better. Moving on from that, this front bed, all onions. Now I, I wanted to tell you these onions are all random. I have those randomly placed all throughout the garden. In front of the onions, this is our little tote. It's got kale and uh, poppies. In this grow bag, I put some sunflowers. Next to that, mint coming back from last year. This little green pot is empty. Next to it is a three-year-old strawberry. It's, this is its third year coming back. And then I have a zinnia and a cosmo right across from a zinnia and a cosmo. I thought that that would look nice. I'm really trying to be organized this year. I think that'll look pretty when they come in. And then again, symmetrically, I have um, my elderberries. You can see that some of these leaves are a little yellow. I just went ahead and fertilized them yesterday. They are in a pot, they do need to be fertilized, and so that's why they're looking a little yellow, but they're still putting on their little flowers there. So they're, they're doing fine, they just needed a little food. And so I did that for both of them. And I'm excited for both of them this year. I think I'm really gonna get a crop off of them. And then this is my little mess from yesterday. Um, again, I did all this planting yesterday, so I just haven't finished cleaning up yet, but that's okay, I'll take care of it. This is the herb bed in this first little corner. This is the oregano corner. That big one there came back. It perennialized from last year. I was so surprised. That is a little lavender plant right there that I started from seed. These two right here, I don't know what they are. They came back from last year. I, I have no I couldn't tell you what those are. Next to it though, that is a sage plant that again came back from last year. I was so happy 
with all of these things coming back, that sage is just delicious. This is where I put the thyme and the dill that we purchased today. I went ahead and threw those in the herb bed. And then everything else in this bed is basil. Basil that we started from seed together. And I'm so excited for those to grow. I'm going to start putting it on my breakfast every morning again. And it's just going to be oh, so good. And so that's it. So we've got the rhubarb and the chamomile. We've got the pepper beds that also have onions and cucumbers. We've got the tomato beds that also have onions and that one echinacea plant. We've got the flower beds that also have the zucchini. We've got calendula, lettuce and cabbage, the onion bed. And then this is the front. And then if you're new here, those are climbing roses growing up the arch trellis there. And those are three years old this year. They, they put on beautifully last year and I expect them to do the same this year. Now, moving on along the fence, our, our, our backyard is totally fenced with this chain link fence. And along this one side here, I planted raspberry bushes. This will be their fourth year, these ones that I'm showing you now. And I'm so happy with how they're filling in and they are putting on so many buds. I think we're going to have a really prolific year for raspberries, which is exciting because last year, don't get me wrong, I had a lot. I mean, several handfuls every time I would go outside, but it was still not more than what I myself could just eat going outside. And I want enough to where I could like do some canning projects or like, I don't know, cook or bake with them in some way. And I'm not, I'm only getting enough to eat myself fresh. So I'm hopeful that this year will be the first year that I really get like a strong harvest. It's looking like that will be the case. Now over here between this original mama raspberry and all these baby raspberries in between there is this one lone blackberry bush. I've almost lost this thing twice. I've had it for the same amount of time as the, as the others. Um, and it struggled so much. Last year was the first year that I was like, maybe this thing won't die. But it, I didn't get anything off of it. And look at it now. It's doing so well. And it's covered in all these beautiful little buds that will turn into this gorgeous little flower here. And that will turn into blackberries. Blackberries are one of my favorite fruits. I have it tattooed on me. And I'm so excited to actually have some come out of the homestead. I can't wait. And there you go. Isn't she beautiful? I just love this garden. I live on a, a just a little quarter acre property in a suburb. Look at, I'm surrounded by houses and this is what I've managed to pull off back here. And I'm, I'm so grateful. This is next to the shed. Okay. I try every year to put flowers in here because I think it looks so pretty against the white shed, but they get eaten by like mice or rabbits or something. And so this is me trying to lock it down and still, yeah, they're still getting eaten. That's what I was just pointing to. I, two plants out from underneath that still gotten got eaten. So I have a few little flowers that I popped in. I don't even remember what these are. Maybe carnations. I don't even know. It doesn't matter. They're going to get eaten. <laughs> My um, daylilies there are the only things that like hold strong in that bed. Whatever. It is what it is. But yeah, that's why I have the rest of it surrounded by netting to try and protect it. And I have high hopes for it. I think it's going to, I think it's going to do really well this year. And there's my handsome Tom made a little appearance while I was filming. Look at him. <laughs> oh, I love him. All right. Well, there you go. That's the garden. I'm so excited about it. I think it is really well organized this year, which makes me really happy. Um, last year I was totally winging it, but I also had a lot going on last year. So I get it the year before that was my first year with this garden. It went so well, but I really think it was beginner's luck. So this is the first year that I'm like very intentionally trying to organize it and take it seriously and really like take a good stab at it, you know? Um, and I'm happy with it so far. You could see there that some of those things looked a little yellow. The My peppers didn't look as vibrant as the peppers from the nursery. I did go through and fertilize with organic plant tone, uh, plant tone which is just an organic fertilizer. Um, I had said in a different video that I was going to try and see if I could go without any amendments this year. 
um, because in years past, I've started off by topping each bed with compost. I couldn't afford to do that this year, so I'm foregoing it, but I already owned this bag of plantone, so I'm hoping I can get through with it. We'll see. So hopefully things start to green up a little bit after I did that. And we got some really great rain. This that, It was yesterday. Um, I went through and fertilized everything. And then we got a great, great heavy rain. So I'm hoping that that will really help everything look good. Um, but yeah, so thanks for taking a look at the garden with me. Um, now I'd want to just kind of briefly talk to you a little bit about what's been going on. And I will of course put out a full video on this when I know more. There are a couple of things that we're waiting to really iron out before I'm comfortable like coming to you guys with this fully. Um, we, Tom and I had a realtor come to the house this past week to look at it and to have a conversation with us about selling. Um, we're starting to very seriously pursue purchasing property, which has been one of our goals since I started this channel. Um, you know, even in my uh, Instagram bio, it says daily dreaming of having a farm. It's been an underlying uh, theme this entire time. And it, it's always just felt like a dream, you know. And now I think we're finally starting to get to the point where we're trying to make it reality. But that's not easy and it requires a lot of um, thought and hard work, planning. Uh, there's just a lot that goes into it and it's not going to happen overnight. In fact, it's looking like, and again, this is why I don't like to just like, like float ideas to you guys. I like to come with you to come to you with concrete things, um, but I don't think it's going to be totally feasible in this situation. It's looking like we're going to sell our house next spring. I don't think we're going to do it right now. And instead, there are a few other things that we're doing in set instead. And those are the things that I'm not quite ready to tell you yet. However, I can go ahead and tell you that my uploading on this channel my pursuing this channel is taking a serious backseat <laughs> to all of these other things that we're working on that i'm not ready to share with you yet um, i've been uploading trying to monday wednesday saturday that's going out the window i will not be uploading consistently for the rest of the year it's just not going to happen there's no way i don't want to come to you and announce a break because i don't want to take Ooh. away the ability for me to upload if I want to because I very well still may I, I'm sure I will between now and the end of the year I'm sure I'll have content to put on this channel um, but I can't I can't have it be the forefront of my focus right now I've got too many other things Tom and I have too many other things going on as we pursue the purchasing the selling of this property and the purchasing of another one there's a lot that goes into it all will be made clear to you soonish um because i know i'm speaking so cryptically right now it's all exciting stuff it's just that it's very you know i don't know i think with me starting the youtube channel i i i thought that it was going to be this like dream thing where like i had the channel and i just started making so much money and we just easily bought a property and it was just easy and it's just not going to play out that way for us i don't think and I'm okay with that. I think that what I was thinking was <laughs> not the norm. And, you know, not that that can't glorify God, but I think I would rather have a set of circumstances that multiple people can actually see themselves in and can actually have as inspiration. I think I'd rather be able to present that to, to you guys and to whoever needs to see it and hear it um, than the former. So... I'm happy to have this play out however it's meant to play out for us. Uh, but I say all of that to say this path that Tom and I have started to walk down requires hard work. <laughs> A lot of hard work. So again, I'll get more. it'll be made clear to you soon. As soon as we get a couple of things buttoned up, I will come to you with the plan. I want to be able to lay out the whole plan for you guys, but I want to know what that is first before I try to do that. So anyway, um, yeah, I will still be uploading, but I don't know when or how frequently or what that's going to look like. So if you are subscribed, please hit that little bell button, the little bell icon, because that will turn on notifications for my channel and it will actually tell you when I upload something. That would be the best way to support me and to make sure that you're still seeing any content that I do upload between now and next year, basically, really, is what this is going to be. Um, and that would be great if you could do that. If you're watching this and you haven't subscribed, um, I would still encourage you to do that because 
wow, is there some really great stuff coming in the future? It's just gonna be a little while. And in the meantime, I have over 200 videos on this channel that I have put a lot of time and work into. And so you could always explore those. I'll put a couple, a couple playlists at the end of this video that you could explore um, and that would be great. So for those of you who have been with me for all, the beginning or for a long time, oh, we're, we're, we're getting there, you guys. We're so close. Ah, the day where I can like come to you in my, my big farmhouse kitchen with all the recipes and we're outside on the acreage with the animals. Those days are coming. They're coming. It's just, it's not an overnight thing. It's not an overnight thing and that's okay. So thanks guys for listening. I can't wait to see you in my next video, whenever that may be, but moral of the story, have faith and keep moving forward.